So I thought it might be easier to do in Welcome to episode 39 of the Knit Now Swatch Later podcast. My name is Courtney. This is a knitting podcast where I talk about all of my crafting and I am coming to you from Pennsylvania where I live with my husband and our two dogs and two cats. You can find me on Instagram as Knit Now Swatch Later and on Ravelry as Pup and we have a Ravelry group for this podcast which is in the links down below with links to project pages and any shops that I talk about during the episode. So I have one finished object to show you guys and two half objects, one of which you have not seen on the podcast yet. So let's just jump right in. So first up I have the finished object which is the granny block blanket. This is the second one of these that I have crocheted and I used the mandala cake in the colorway wood nymph for this one and that is all done it took me about two weeks this one is a little bit bigger than the other one but I still only used one cake so it's a really fast project for baby blankets and it only uses up one of those mandala cakes so it's not too bad on yarn usage either so um, so yeah, now that I've showed that on the podcast and I have pictures and stuff, I can go ahead and get this all packaged up to go to its new owner. <laughs> Next up, I have a half object, which is Ben's Rhinebeck Rumi sock. Let me focus. There we go. This is the Rhinebeck Rumi sock by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. And this progress keeper from Sassanac Yarn Company is marking where I was the last time I showed it on the podcast. So I finished the sock and bound off. And I used um, a US size 1 9 inch circular needle. And the purple is um, three Irish girls in the colorway Witch's Brew. And then the contrast heel and toe are just something from my stash. Okay, and then next up I have another half object, which is another sock because I couldn't, I could finish two socks in two weeks, but they couldn't be from the same pair because that just doesn't make sense. So this is a vanilla sock that I knit, I cast on 64 stitches and did a knit to purl to rib for the cuff and then just straight vanilla knitting the rest of the way down. I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe. So that worked up really quickly. For that I used USA's one Addy Flexi Flips which were first of all a nightmare to get a hold of. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but I had a really hard time getting these, so I'm really glad that I like them. But there, I cast on the second sock. I mean, I just cast on, so there's nothing to show. But there are three needles, and they look like this. And they're kind of like a hybrid between a double pointed needle and um, the long circular needle for Magic Loop. So I really liked it. I. I don't know when I cast that on, but it did not take me very long at all to knit the first sock. So I am really enjoying those so far. And then I just finished that up this morning and cast on the second sock. I haven't cast on the second sock for Ben's pair yet, but we'll get there. <laughs> and then the yarn that I used was Hot Yarn, Hot Knit Yarn on the Jimmy Sock base. Um, this is what her tag looks like. And then the colorway is holy crap on a cracker. <laughs> just because I I enjoyed that so much. I just couldn't couldn't not cast it on right away. So, so that's what I did. Um, so I guess I kind of 
rolled into works in progress. I showed you the vanilla socks I'm working on and I did not cast on the second Rhinebeck Rumi sock so I'm not going to show that. I do have in this bag with my summer sock camp pin. Are you guys getting excited for summer sock camp? If you're participating let me know in the comments below because I'm getting excited. I'm getting a little ahead of myself and casting on all the socks now but Hopefully, I will still have plenty of socks in it then. <laughs> anyway, this is my other vanilla sock, which is in the Mango Tango sock set from Pineapple Yarn. And this coffee stitch marker is marking where I was the last time I showed it on the podcast. Um, this is just car knitting, so it doesn't get a ton of progress. I don't really have an end goal in mind for these. I just work on them whenever I'm in the car. Sometimes I bring them whenever we're going to visit like my parents or my husband's parents and knit on them there. So they get a little bit of work but I don't have a finish. Don't have a finish date in mind for those. And then for the last for the last knitting work in progress, I have in my pig bucket here my Mama cardigan, which is a pattern by Pip and Pin. And then this chip progress keeper is marking where I was the last episode of the podcast. So a good amount, maybe like an inch, like an inch of progress. Um, I have been working on this for a long time, but I love the texture of the brioche on the back of the sweater. I think I'm on the last repeat for that, and then I will split for the sleeves, and then hopefully things will start going a little bit faster. I won't be, I don't think I'll be increasing for every round, for every row, and I won't have to knit the sleeves anymore so hopefully that will speed things up but I have been making it my goal to work on that for 30 minutes every day. It doesn't happen every day but I've been trying really hard to make some good progress on that to show you guys so I think I think it's working. I mean I have a lot more progress this week than I did last episode of the podcast so that's good and then I do have one more work in progress to show you guys, but it's not a knitting whip. So I have this really cute, I had this really cute jelly roll, um, or I feel like my husband, he lovingly calls them fat rolls, so whatever, <laughs> whatever you guys call them, but the strips of fabric that are pre-cut and rolled into a roll. And I decided to make a quilt with them. So here's four of the strips cut into this like uh, polygon shape. But I love this fox, it's so cute. Okay, and I don't remember, um, I don't remember what the pattern is called or who it's by or anything. So I will link to that in the description box below. But I did, I have sewed all of the strips together. I just need to cut these ones. Um, and you just like cut them on the diagonal. So yeah, I've made pretty good progress in that. I think I've only worked on that like twice and I have, it's almost done. So, and then I picked out this fabric for the back. It's like these little teal butterflies. And I thought it was really pretty. And I got that from my husband's grandmother's stash, so that'll be nice to use up and let's see what else. I'm going to try, I'm not a huge quilter, um, I don't think I've ever finished a quilt. I just make the, the quilt tops and then I bail. But for this one, I saw a method where you do your like quilt sandwich, um, with the individual pieces so I thought maybe I would give that a try that sounded really interesting so what I would do if you're interested is I would take this piece 
and then I would cut the batting and the backing in this shape. And then I would do my quilt sandwich and do the quilting on just this block. And then at the end I would sew all of the pre-quilted blocks together and then my quilt will be done. So that sounds a lot easier than trying to shove the whole finished quilt underneath the sewing machine and then quilting on it. I've never quilted anything so that'll be interesting. So I thought it might be easier to do in bite size pieces like that. But we'll see. <laughs> um, so moving in to books, I did finish A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and I loved it. I thought that it was really good, it was really interesting. Um, I liked the way that it ended, but apparently it's part of a series, which I have a problem with starting series, and then I keep reading them, and then they stop being as good, so I abandon the series. So I don't know if I will continue that series, but we'll see, because I didn't know it was a series until after I finished it, so it tied things up pretty nicely in the end, so that worked for me, but we'll see. And then right now I am reading Promised by Kara M. O'Brien, which is the third book in the Birthmarked series that was recommended to me by a viewer. Um, I think your name was Carolyn, so thank you so much for that recommendation. I have been really enjoying it. I'm about halfway through that already, and I just started it on Monday, I think. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much everything, um, for chat. I don't have, I don't have anything. We bought, we ordered a, a new love seat. We're rearranging our living room, but that's not going to be here for like another month. So, yeah, exciting, but also not exciting because it's going to take forever to get here. But thanks, COVID. <laughs> Anyway, I do have a shop update coming this week on Friday, so when this episode airs, I will have these sock, sock bags in the shop. They are purple with birds on them, and this one I definitely showed up, sewed upside down, but this is mine, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I promise the birds are not upside down on the ones in the shop, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's just a little sock bag. This is what I am keeping Ben socks in, but it fits the cake. Obviously, it's just a little bit now, but there was a full-size cake in here, and then this little cake, and both pairs of needles, because you have to use a longer needle to finish your toe decreases when you're knitting on the 9 inch circular. So, I've got all of that in here, and I did have the other, the other sock in here. I just took it out to show on the podcast. But yeah, that's a pretty good size. You could probably fit two 50 gram cakes in there along with your project. So these will be in the shop on Friday. What is that? April 30th, I believe. And as always, you can use the coupon code KnitNowSwatchLater for 15% off of your total purchase. And I think that's everything for this episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like this video and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I share a podcast every two weeks. So until next time, happy knitting. Bye.